Kickstarter and other sites like it are a great way for small businesses with big dreams to get their ideas out into the marketplace. But unfortunately, not all these crowdfunding efforts turn out so well. So today, I want to talk about the top 5 Kickstarter disasters. Anita Sarkeesian is a very polarizing figure on the internet to say the least. And while I may look into more of why people dislike her at a later date, today let's focus on her 2012 Kickstarter campaign, Tropes vs. Women in Video Games, which I remember was spread all around the internet that year, with it making over $158,000. With all eyes on her, Anita went to work on the series. But on the Kickstarter page, she appeared to be overzealously promising that the rewards including a DVD of all the episodes of her miniseries would be ready by the end of 2012. But the very first episode of the series wasn't released until 2013. And now with it being well into 2015, the series is still not complete. On top of this, many YouTubers have spoken out that there was no need for her to get a six-figure sum of money to make an online series about video games. But whether or not you agree with Anita, her fans don't seem to mind the lateness of the content, so it only gets the number 5 spot. Asylum was set up to be a limited run of a customized set of playing cards, featuring a cast of creepy characters sporting straitjackets. Ed Nash promised that if they raised $15,000, he would be able to turn this custom deck into reality, and people believed him because he ended up raising over twenty-five dollars Shortly after the completion of the campaign, the update slowed down and the deadline for the shipment of the playing cards came and went. Ed Nash continued to use Instagram and run his management company even though he had stopped giving updates, with it becoming clear that he was ignoring the backers, leading many to start throwing out allegations of fraud. With it looking more and more like this was a scam, the Washington State Attorney General filed a lawsuit against Ed Nash and his company for not shipping out the perks assured to his backers. But just before finishing up this script, it seems that people's playing cards finally started getting sent out, years after the original due date. So maybe that lawsuit worked. The doom that came to Atlantic City can be summed up with its tagline that reads, Once people came to Atlantic City to seek their fortune, to construct fine hotels and establish powerful monopolies, but you're not here to build, you've come to destroy. This board game was promoted as allowing you to play as the bad guy, in this case being the evil creatures, and that hook enticed people to back a six figure total for this game to be made. But things went bad when people found out that the money raised wasn't being used very efficiently, with the creator admitting that much of it was spent on him quitting his job and moving to Portland. With this, many people were furious with Eric, the game's creator. He said that he wanted to refund everyone but didn't know how since he spent all the money on an unfinished game and moving. Fortunately, a third-party board game company stepped in and took over the project so the game would be released, with you being able to buy it right now on Amazon. The lesson that could be learned from this is that before backing a project, make sure that the creator has at least some money management skills. Exploding Rabbit is an indie video game developer most famously known for creating Super Mario Bros. Crossover, a mod of the classic NES game that allowed you to play through the Mushroom Kingdom as an array of classic characters, including Samus, Mega Man, Link, and many more. With the success of his free-to-play NES crossover, the Exploding Rabbit lead developer Jay Pavlina wanted to take the premise of having a ton of different characters with a variety of abilities and create a game that didn't use copyrighted work, which is how Super Retro Squad was created. Jay went to Kickstarter with his game idea and asked for $10,000 to make his dream game a reality. And even though he had no demo and only concept art, he was able to raise over $53,000, well past his original price. While everything looked like it was going well, it seemed that the team over at Exploding Rabbit had promised a game that would be a lot more difficult to build than they first thought. And by the time of the game's 2013 due date, many backers discovered that it wasn't even close to being completed. While his intentions seemed to be good, Jay had underestimated such a massive project. Even though he had gotten over five times what he said he needed to complete the game, in 2014 what he showed still didn't look even close to a finished product. And now he simply says that the game will be out eventually. Whether that means six months or six years is anyone's guess. Without a doubt in my mind, Yogg Ventures is the king of all Kickstarter disasters. 
While the Yogscast channel was created all the way back in 2007, with them focusing mainly on Let's Plays of World of Warcraft, they gained massive popularity when they started making videos for what was at the time a little indie game called Minecraft. And from there they have amassed over 7 million subscribers. So with this massive amount of success from YouTube and the new and exciting frontier of crowdfunding, they started a Kickstarter with Wintercool Games to produce Yogg Ventures, an open world sandbox game where you can explore the vast lands while becoming immersed in the world. Many criticized them for using such an outlet since they had a massive fan base and could have found more traditional ways to fund such a project. But these doubts didn't stop the game from receiving over a half a million dollars from backers. Things of course went downhill from here though, as the game's developers seemed incompetent for such a massive project, with one game artist getting a lump sum of $35,000, then leaving after two weeks of work because his contract didn't specify what he needed to do in exchange for that money. It quickly became apparent that this game wasn't going to come out, and later Yogg Ventures was officially cancelled. When backers went to Yogg's cast creators Luce and Simon asking for a refund, they shrugged it off and said it wasn't their problem, since the campaign was technically set up by Wintercool Games and they just gave them permission to use their likeness. When questioned about the claims that they were paid $150,000 from the Kickstarter money, they refused to comment. All of this has led to the YouTube Let's Players losing a lot of fans that had spent money in support of one of their favorite channels, just to have them go and say it wasn't their problem when perks weren't delivered. Well there you have my picks for the top 5 Kickstarter disasters. If you enjoyed this video you can click here to subscribe or click here to follow me on Twitter. Also if you have any opinions about anything mentioned in this video, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'm sure we could have a very civil conversation about Anita Sarkeesian. So anyway guys, until next time, thanks for watching.